Hello everyone, my name is Hassan Salim and I'm a regulated Canadian Immigration Consultant of Canada and I do practice here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Before I say anything else, I want to take some time and uh, wish you all a very, very, very happy new year. I know there's still a couple of days remaining, but I wanted to be the first one to wish you and your families a very happy new year. And I hope you get whatever you want in your uh, next year. And uh, I hope your dreams come true. If the dream is about coming to Canada, hopefully 2024 is the year you come to this amazing country. Now, this video is uh, one of the topics that I, I get a lot of questions about is that how to become an RCIC in Canada. So this is another video of the previous three videos I've posted. I thought it would be a great idea to share all my knowledge that I have and all the information from the website where you can get all the information about becoming an IRCC member that is RCIC, Regulated Canadian Immigration Consultant. So if you are interested in this career path, watch this video till the very end so I can break it down for you how to become an RCIC, the eligibility, the criteria, the deadlines for admission, and how does that happen um, and how does that journey look like. So watch this video till the very end. I'll break it down for you in a very fresh new video today. And uh, let's get the party started in 2024. <laughs> Welcome back. Now I won't waste any time and we'll get right into it. Now the first question or the main question of this video is how to become an RCIC that is Regulated Canadian Immigration Consultant of Canada and how does the journey look like. Now first of all this program in which you need to study in order to become an RCIC is called Graduate Diploma uh, in Immigration and Citizenship Law if you want to know the short form is uh, right on the screen right now is G dip that's D I P diploma and I C L that is immigration and citizenship law. So again, the graduate diploma in immigration and citizenship law G dip I C L is a short form of this program. And that is only offered in one university that is the Queens university and i will also share the link in the comments of this or in fact in the description of this video so you can have a look in um, detail and kind of find out more about this program if you want to become an rcic now let me tell you this is a very very high demand program previously the procedure was a little different but uh, from last one year or two the things have changed only queen's university is the university that offers this diploma program and it's a very high demand program as i said so even if you meet all the criteria it is not sure i repeat it is not sure that you will get admission in this program the admission is given to the people with the highest qualification. So just think of it, if 10 people have applied for a program um, and only six seats are available, the six seats would be given to the people who would have the highest uh, qualifications uh, in this program. Now let's talk about the intake, like the admission deadlines uh, for this program. So the starting dates and the deadlines for this amazing program are two in a year. So the first one is the bigger intake uh, that starts basically in September. So if we talk about 2024, the first or the second intake would be September 2024. And uh, the uh, applications begin from January 15. So if that is the career or the path you are looking for, this would be the ideal time to start looking into this program and start collecting the documents that you would require. And we will talk about the documents in this video uh, later on. But right now talking about the starts and the deadlines, September intake is the bigger intake of the year where you can apply as a full-time student or a part-time student. And the applications open on January 15 of this year. That is 2024. And uh, the deadline to submit your documents would be April 1st. So April 1st is the deadline to apply for the program. And in order to submit the documents, the deadline is May 1st. So you would have an extra month in order to apply for the documents. But April 1 is the last uh, date when you can apply for this program. Now, the smaller intake or the second starting date would be uh, January. So January is the smaller intake that only allows 
full time students. So part time students are not allowed in the January intake. And in that, uh, the application deadline is August 1st. So if you want to start this January 2024, you should have already applied in August. So August is the deadline. So if you want to start in January 2025, August of 2024 would be the deadline for you to apply for this program. And uh, the deadline for submitting the documents would be September 1st. So again, you can apply till August. But the document submission can be done till September 1st of uh, that year. So that was uh, the uh, admission start dates and the deadlines. And remember, for the people who get selected in this program, will be told their decision um, no later than two months after the program has been closed for the application intake. So after the submission date or the deadline that is April 1st or August 1st, you will get the results within two months that you got accepted in this program or not. So these were the dates for the intake starting and the deadlines. So let's talk about the criteria in order to get into this program. Not everyone can apply for this program. Obviously, this program has a criteria which you need to meet in order to apply for this program to become an RCIC. Uh, that is a regulated Canadian Immigration Consultant of Canada. Now, the first thing first, you need to have at least a bachelor's degree. Okay, so you need to have a bachelor's degree. That's criteria number one. And uh, number two would be related to that. And that is how much you have scored. So you need to have a minimum of B average or equivalent in the bachelor's degree. So if you have a bachelor's degree, this, but the GPA or the result is not that great, let's, uh, great, let's say you have a C or a D grade, but you're past the uh, graduation degree, you would not make it. As I said earlier, that uh, the people with the highest qualification will get the preference or the priority in this program. So you need to have a bachelor's degree and even that bachelor's degree, you need to have passed with a minimum of B grade in your graduation program. Now, another thing is the IELTS. I know many people get scared of IELTS uh, because you need to score a very good score in each individual module that is needs to be seven overall in IELTS uh, or more. And every individual band that is your speaking, writing, listening, or speak or uh, reading, all four should be seven or more. So any band which has less than seven, uh, you would not be eligible. So you need to have seven or more in each band, along with the overall score of being seven or more. So that was another uh, requirement for this program. Now talking about um, the requirements of the program, another requirement is that you need to provide two references. So if you're really fresh out of your um, education, let's say your master's or bachelor's degree uh, within the last two years, then you need to provide two academic references um, for this program. But if it's been a long time that you have completed your education, now you're working in certain field, you need to provide at least one working reference, like work experience reference, and also one academic reference. And again, uh, the references are really important, and they would be uh, sent an email where they would need to send out their uh, recommendation form as well. So make sure you select the right references who can reply back to the email if they are uh, contacted by uh, this program or the university itself um, and want to know more about you. And uh, that is really important. So references need to be either one academic and one professional or both uh, can be academic if you have recently graduated from any university or uh, so the program. fifth requirement of this program is uh, a personal statement of interest. Now, what is that? So if you are applying to this program, just like many universities ask for a uh, 
statement of interest in an MBA program or any other kind of program. Similarly, you have to write down a personal statement, which basically means you have to write down why are you motivated to apply for this program? Uh, have you done any research of your own or you like helping people? You have a lot of interest in immigration and uh, you have been staying up to date with this program or you have been staying up to date with the immigration news of Canada. That's the reason you want to apply. You have a lot of people you can help back home or in every part of the world. So you need to write that down. It needs to be at least 400 words. And one quick tip from me would be do not use any application or any software related to AI because it can uh, easily get detected. So if you're thinking of uh, making a statement of interest by using chat GPT or any other AI software, do not do that. Write a simple story. It doesn't need to be any complicated. Whatever you feel like, uh, write that down. Why you are motivated, why you want to do this program, why you want to take admission in this program. That's all what is being asked for. Obviously, there is no wrong answer. Uh, there is no right answer for this. It's just your own story, your own statement of interest that why you want to apply for this program. The better it is, the more stronger it is, um, better is the chance for you to get on the priority list of the people um, looking for admissions in this program. For the eligibility, now let me tell you this uh, graduate diploma program in immigration and citizenship law is open to all applicants um, and of all nationalities regardless of their residency or st citizenship status in Canada. So uh, feel free to read about it. No matter what your status is in Canada, you are eligible to apply for this program. Now let's talk about one of the most important things and that is the fee. As I can see right now on the website, as I've also shared the link, you can check it out. The fees can change anytime. But as of making this video, that is the last update was on September 1st of 2023. And the fee for this uh, all terms included is total tuition fee that I'm talking about is $15,176. So the total fee that you would be paying for this program is 15,176 and that fee is still the latest update from the website that is on September 1st, 2023. Now that is the fee. And once you have completed your program, after you have met that criteria, you have completed that program, the total fee uh, has been paid. Uh, there is also an eligibility requirement for you to give the final exam that is called entry to practice exam EPE uh, that is the main exam which you pass or fail in order to qualify or to become an RCIC after your education has completed and the eligibility for that is uh, you should have completed that uh, graduate diploma program from the Queen's University with a minimum of B uh, grade in order to become an RCIC and you should be at least 18 years of age. So a simple criteria in order to pass uh, or in order to sit in the entry to practice exam, you need to be 18 years or above. And also you need to pass this uh, graduate program with minimum of grade B. For this application fee, you have to pay $75 and fee for the exam is $425. So after you have paid all the fee, another fee that you would be looking for or you would have to pay basically is to apply for the entry to practice exam. And the application fee for that exam is $75. And also the fee for the exam itself is $425. So technically you're paying $500 again in order to apply or sit in the exam for EPE, the whole program you studied for this uh, exam, basically. Now let's talk about the courses that you would study. Nine courses that would be delivered in three terms under 12 months. So technically you would be studying this program for at least one year or less. And um, the courses that would be delivered are nine and those are in three terms that uh, this program is breaking, broken down into. So you have to complete the nine courses in order to become an RCIC. And uh, the courses that you would be studying are on the screen right now. You can uh, take your time and read about these courses. There is a lot more detail to just these names. Um, you can go in each individual uh, course to learn more that what you would be studying throughout this particular course. 
that is nine courses that you would be studying. I won't go into a lot of detail because I know you are just uh, looking for this program right now. So you might not know the whole detail of what these courses are all about. But again, it's a great idea to check that out on the website if you are really interested on uh, what the details of each individual course would be. So the course outline and the course information is on the website. So these are the details of uh, not details in fact these are the names of the courses that you would be studying in um, these three terms but not the least uh, let's talk about uh, what will your journey look like and uh, what are the learning methods it's pretty simple uh, if you have taken any online courses you would already know but as i said these are nine courses that we delivered in three months under 12 months uh, three terms under 12 months uh, it's interactive online learning and uh, course load is similar to a full-time job so when you're taking this course full-time just think of it you are giving full dedication to it it's uh, very similar to you are working as a full-time employee somewhere and uh, it's a full-time job that you have to take on if you are a full-time student and uh, the more emphasis in this program is uh, since it's interactive online learning is on your time management so how you can manage time how you can make sure you complete uh, all the courses you provide all the assessments and assignments given to you so it's all on you how you take care of your uh, course and how time efficient you are in order to become rcic because that's one of the most important things when you become an rcic you would realize Time is the key for anything as well, but as an RCIC, it's very important to know the deadlines and to know where what your client needs to provide before a specific time frame. Learning methods is uh, weekly tutorials with the uh, leading experts uh, live weekly. Uh, so you would be in um, online studying weekly uh, with the leading experts in the immigration field and uh, there would be case studies there would be simulations so you would be going going through different case scenarios in which you would uh, be given a think of a client who's in that situation how would you handle that what kind of case laws you would talk about what kind of references you would give in your application uh, there would be a lot of self-directed learnings and also there would be a lot of collaborative learning so the people who are in this program with you there would be a lot of assignments or the uh, learnings that you would need to do together and there's some learnings you would need to do individually and also there would be competency-based assessments so the assessments are one of the main things for you to prepare for the entry to practice exam so if you are doing good in those assessments and you're providing your assignments as i said and you are collaborating with your friends for a case that you are not sure what to do you are on the right path so this was a quick breakdown of uh, the RCIC program that is Graduate Diploma in Immigration and Citizenship Law. Hopefully you would have learned something out of this video. If you did like your, this video, um, please share with your friends and family who are interested in this program and also like this video and uh, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can keep making these videos. If you would like to reach out to me for a paid consultation for this program or anything related to immigration, I'll be more than happy to uh, have a consultation session with you. Remember, my sessions are paid. So if you are inter interested, reach out to me on my WhatsApp or you can send me an email as well. My contact information has been uh, shared with you guys throughout this video and I'm sharing it right now again and it would also be available in the description of this video. So once again, a very happy new year to you all. And if you're interested in this program for the January or for the September intake, January 15 is the last date when you can apply for this program. So you are ready way ahead of uh, starting this program that you are serious about it and uh, taking this course for your career path. So this is me, Hudson Salim, signing out from one more video and I'll be back with another new video on a different topic or maybe another topic on the same case and uh, hopefully you will like that video even more. So have a great day and uh, happy holidays.